Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Did you know that Lightroom Classic has a robust set of search tools? In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use them. If you find the need to search for an image in your Lightroom library, what you need to do is first go to the library module. All searches are done there. Now you could search any individual folder for an image or any individual collection for an image. Or if you find the need to search through your entire Lightroom catalog of images, what you need to do is go to the root folder. So go up here to the folders tab and click on the folder that is the root folder. This is the folder that contains all your other folders. Here, mine is called Lightroom Raw Files. Yours probably is called something else. Doesn't matter what it's called, just click on it. And you can see that I'll be searching then through all 74,713 images for, let's say, a specific image. Now, to get to those search tools, you'll need to be in grid view. So hit the G key on your keyboard and you can see now my images are in a grid. Now along the top is the library filter bar. If you don't see this, hit the backslash key on your keyboard. That will turn that filter bar off and on. And you could see that we could search through three different ways. You could search for text somewhere in metadata, an attribute, and metadata itself. Let's go to text first. So here we'll be able to search through any searchable text field in the metadata for a specific word or words or the beginning of a word, end of a word, stuff like that. Now you could see any searchable field. Well, what are those searchable fields? You might be wondering. Well, click on that drop down and you could see file name, copy name, title, caption, keywords, and so on. Now, if I know for a fact that the image I'm searching for has a caption that says something specific, I could just click on caption and search through all the captions in my Lightroom catalog for whatever I type in the search field. Or if I'm not sure where this keyword or the specific word is that I'm searching, just go to the top, any searchable field. It works very quickly, so it won't really slow you down. Now, are you searching for contains? Contains all, so if I write more than one word in the search field, it has to contain all of them. It has to contain words. It doesn't contain those words. It starts with or ends with. Let's go to contains hall. And let's go here and let's search now any searchable field in the metadata for the word thinking or think. All right, so we go there and you can see these are images in my entire Lightroom catalog that somewhere in the metadata in a searchable field has the word think. You can see there's a sign like thinking which way to go. These people are thinking. This lady, I guess, is thinking, this guy's thinking, this is a stock image. So the photographer that took this image probably has a keyword think in there. So uh, you can see that these people look like they're thinking. So that narrowed it down quite a bit. So you could see how you could search any searchable field for a word or words or the beginning of a word, end of a word, and you'll be able to find what you need with that text search. Let's go to the next one over attribute. Let's go there. Attributes are, well, did you give it a, a flag, a reject flag or a pick flag? Did you give it a star rating? Do you see how I have some defaulted already? I must have used this before. Let's undo those. Now we have all our images here, right? So do you want to search for just images that were picked, images that don't have any flag at all, or images that have a reject flag? Let's do reject flag. Let's see. Oh, I have three images in my entire Lightroom library that I have a reject flag. If I want to undo that, just click on that reject flag again. Now you could stack these. So let's say I want images that have a pick flag or the white flag. Images that are edited, this would be unedited. Let's go with edited. Let's have greater than or equal to three stars. So there are images now that have a white flag that have some edits done to them and they're greater than or equal to three stars. You can see this has five stars. Well, what if I wanted images that were just equal to three stars? Click right here and go down to rating is equal to three stars. There you go, three star images right there. Well, color labels, what about yellow? Do I have any yellow? Nope, no yellow. 
All right, let's see if we have a color label. No. So you can see how there's, I don't have any images that have a pick flag, that are edited, that have are equal to three stars and have a yellow label. How about greater than or equal to three stars? Yeah, I have two images there. So you could see how you could kind of stack all of this on top of one another to get what you're looking for. Also on the far right, do you want actual photos, virtual copies, or videos? So if I had a video, let's say I had one video in my catalog, I want to find it real quick. I click right there. I don't have any, but you could see how you could just, just virtual copies. And again, you could stack all these on one another uh, to find an image by its attribute or attributes. So kind of cool, very easy to do that. Let's go to the next one over, metadata. You can see that I have four boxes going across the top. You may or may not have these four boxes and your four boxes might have different info in them. Uh, this uh, really is all customizable and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now by default, or by at least on my Lightroom library, on the far left I have camera. So look at all these different cameras, uh, Canon cameras, um, there's some Fuji cameras, there's some Sony cameras. So. Uh, Sony a7R4, there's uh, 2,770 images there. There's iPhones. There's a bunch of Nikon cameras. There's some Fuji cameras. So if I wanted to see all the images I took from my Fujifilm X-T3, click right there, and there's my late great dog Archie is in doggy heaven. But there you can see that I, I have 3,116 3, images taken with the Fujifilm X-T3. Um, once that's clicked, you can see over here lenses. I have some that were taken with a 16 to 55 millimeter f2.8. Some were take with, taken with a 56 millimeter f1.2, and so on. So I have all these different images that were taken with the Fujifilm X-T3 with these specific lenses. Um, so you can see how that comes in really handy. Over here, focal length. Um, now I'm, I'm on all my cameras, all my lenses, and there's different focal lengths here. So do I want to see images just taken at like 35 millimeter? It even narrows it down to the tenth of the millimeter. So you could see. Pretty cool right there. How about flash date? Did I use a flash, not use a flash, and so on? So all that is there as well. Now, I mentioned that this is kind of the way it's set up currently for me, just the last way I happen to do searches. You could change this uh, to really any metadata you want to search for. To do that, let's say you don't need to look at focal length. You want to look for something else. Click right here and you can see uh, shutter speed. So you can search through shutter speeds. Uh, aperture. ISO speed. This is what I most often have on here is because I do videos on Topaz Labs Denoise AI and On One Software's No Noise AI and I want to find images that have really high noise. So I'll quickly just go here and let's say do 25,600. And there's our Cat Rocky, some concert video. So, our concert vid um, images, I should say. So there's 182 images there. So, and again, I could stack it all if I want to see just ones that were shot with specific lens, specific camera. I could do all that and stack all this on top of one another. So it's pretty powerful. Now, as far as these individual um, boxes, I happen to have four. Maybe you don't need to search through four different um, metadata searches. Uh, you could click right here, this little drop down, and remove this column. So I just got rid of that column right there. Um, ISO speed, flash state. Let's say I don't need that one either. Oops, click on the far right, remove that column. So I'm just searching through three. If I wanted to add another column, click there, add a column. And then I could give this, um, you know, whatever, let's say date. So these are all the different dates I took images. You can see 2017 was a very prolific year. Um, I could add another column. As you saw before, I had four columns going across the top. Typically what I do is I like, oops, I like date. I like, there we go. I like date on this first one. I like camera on this one. I like lens on this one. 
there. And this one, I like ISO because I'm often searching for ISO. And this one, I just don't have at all. So I remove this one. I accidentally put that. So those, that's typically the way I have it set up with those four. So you can see now you can search through a searchable text field or a searchable field for a, a text string. You could search through your attributes. Those are flag statuses, color labels, stuff like that. You could search for other metadata like the camera you used, the ISO you shot at, the focal length, and so on. You also could stack these. Uh, for example, um, let's just open up text. All right, so we're going to search for a text field, and I'm going to search for, again, thinking or think. All right. Now, what about attribute? Click on that. You see how that adds that? So I could just do images. I don't have any that are flagged. Here, let's do this real quick. Let's uh, flag that one, flag that one, flag that one, flag that one, and flag that one. Okay, so now I could search for images that just have the text string think somewhere in there that have a white flag. And let's go to metadata. And I want just the images shot with an 85 millimeter 1.8 lens. There you go. So you could see you could stack each of those fields with each other as well. So you could uh, really, you know, use all these different attributes to try to find whatever it is you're searching for. And when you're done, just click on none over here. And then you'll turn off your, your, uh, your searches. And one little thing is this little padlock over here on the far right. Um, these padlocks, if it's locked, and you did a search when you go and then you have like down in the film strip you have images that you know contain all those search elements if you go over to the develop module map module book module that's going to stay there if you undo the lock then when you go to other modules that search field although it will stay in your library module uh, like when you open up the search bar and you want to do search, it'll save it. It will not carry over into the other modules. So let me try to explain. Uh, let's go to the text field and let's again search for think. Okay. Now, these are images down here that just have think. Now, if I go to a different folder, right, see how that closed? And let give it a second now, kind of reset. That's because it, it, that padlock is unlocked. So if I go back and I go to think, these are images just contain think, and I close or I lock that padlock. Now I go to a different folder. You can see it's not, it's keeping this open and it's searching for in that folder images that have think somewhere in searchable metadata. So that is what that padlock does there and also this little drop down here there's just like presets where you could search for camera info so if you have a specific search you always do like you search a text field with a specific word an attribute with a specific like flag status or something and specific metadata that you do all the time you could create a filter preset so you could go over here and you could save current setting as a new preset then you don't have to go through each of these individual headings and type that in every single time. You could just go over here and hit your filter preset to find what you need. I don't have any filter presets. These are the ones that are defaulted with Lightroom. I don't search for the same thing all the time. But if you do, you'll be able to do that with a filter preset. So that's probably pretty much everything I know about searching using the library filter in Lightroom Classic. If you have anything to add, feel free to add it in the comments below. And I hope this helps you find images in your Lightroom catalog. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.